future is here. You now have the power to unlock the secrets of the hobby. An innovation that will change the way the industry works. The game changer is here. Card Ladder. Hey everyone, this is Josh back with Cardboard Chronicles. Uh, today I'm joined by Kyle. How's it going, man? Hey, how's it going, Josh? How are you? So Kyle is a collector that we've, I've been chatting with him on Instagram for a few months now, almost like a year. And uh, we've been grabbing cards, buying stuff together and had a good time chatting. So I thought I'd bring him on for an interview. So why don't you kick us off, Kyle, and just tell us about yourself and your background in the hobby. Um, I uh, got into the hobby as a... Uh very young kid and I um, started to buy when I was very little I went to my local card shop and then I kind of got out of it for at least I don't know maybe three four five years and I recently picked it up at the start of the new year I started talking to Josh about a variety of different things and he would help me out along the way I've been recently buying like some football and basketball they're my main sports. Um, so how do you how do you like fund the hobby for yourself as as a younger person? How, I mean, you're you said you're still in high school, right? Yeah, I'm still in high school. I'm a senior, and um, the way I fund my uh, collection is I just pretty much I do a lot of flipping over cards into bigger cards and then into more and more higher end cards, and I I most of the money that I make. I uh, try to fund it into the hobby and the, my uh, collection, and I just keep turning it over and turning it over, and then I can take that money back out and use it for, like, my gas, my school supplies, all that variety of different things. Is there anything that you collect or things that you want to kind of hold on to long-term, or is it all just kind of, like, flipping and, and investing to trying to make more money? Um, I'm a big Cowboys fan. So I collect a lot of uh, Dak Prescott and uh, a little bit of Ezekiel Elliott, but he's kind of let me down this year. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably be able to get the Dak Prescott stuff pretty cheap right now. Right now, uh, Dak's actually gone down probably like 50% since his injury. I'm going to probably start stashing up some bigger and uh, higher end items of him because, I mean, I, I like him a lot. And I think he's uh, the future of the Cowboys. Yeah, so talk more about like having to fund yourself in the hobby because a lot of guys that I talk to, you know, it's like buying PC cards and, you know, we have like more income to kind of be able to do that. But as someone that doesn't have like a full-time job yet, talk about just like what you have to do as someone to, to almost like survive in the hobby and to keep moving forward. So mainly I'll like, I look for like parts of the hobby that seem kind of like undervalued per se. So one of the main things like I recently just did was I liked the spectra silvers and like the, like the way that they looked. So I went and I bought, um, a Luca spectra silver and the LeBron and some Giannis and the main like big time players. And I thought, and then they're actually super rare too as well. And there's probably only about like maybe 80 per player from last year's spectra. So I went and graded all of mine up. And I probably was into them for maybe like, I don't know, a thousand. And I just flipped them over into like five, seven thousand dollars because I went and graded the Luca and it got a 10. And the Spectra cards have like a, they're like a fixed card stock. So you have to really find a part of the hobby that you don't, like no one's really on and no one's talking about. And that's like the way that I sort of work. I also did it with like some status cards. Like I remember you were buying some status and uh, I bought some off of them and then I moved them, moved some of them, kept like some of the big LeBrons, kept some of the Giannis, kept the Luca, like, but I made some money off of those as well. So you just got to look for sets that you think are undervalued and go after those and then try to just move on from that. 
when people catch on. Yeah. So like, what other, what other things do you look for? Cause I, I think one thing I picked up on is that you're looking for things maybe that you thought looked good, right? You know, like you're what, like, what else are you looking for in terms of, is it like rarity? Is it maybe stuff that's underpriced that's relative to other things? What else are you looking for? I'm mainly looking for cards that are like, have great eye appeal. So like the different, like, um, aspirations from status and the status cards from status, like they were of 23 for LeBron and of 77. Like it's like an intriguing, like something you don't normally see a lot. It's also a, a rare card as well with the Spectra, like it's a great looking card, really shiny silvery card. And you, um, can really just find a way to like um, really look at this, like the eye appeal is really what's the important thing to me. And eventually people start to look in those directions, like once stuff gets really expensive. So people were all like, oh, prism silver, prism silver, prism silver. Then they went to the optic hollow. Then they went to select and then starting to move into spectra even more now because things are just getting so in, so much more expensive in the hobby that you have to find different ways to collect. Do you find it more fun to do it this way? Cause I, I've always thought like the, the prism base PSA 10 route was just, just wasn't as fun and it didn't really connect with me, you know? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I do have some prism silvers, but I don't have as many as I, I would like, but it's really not even my favorite card out in the hobby. Like I don't like the prism silver that much. It's hard to, get one that's in great shape and one that looks really nice like i had some like zions and stuff and they're way off centered like it's it's a tough card to grade as well so i like to go for stuff that i i know there's like not that many of and like it's pretty well produced because they limit down the amount of boxes that came out and it just seems like a safe thing yeah so, like, what are you working towards? What's your What's your goal? I mean, it might be it might be a, a little early to ask some of that stuff because you're you're so young and you got so much ahead of you. But like, do you have sort of like short term, long term goals? Are you trying to build a collection? Are you trying to just make money for your for your future? What What, what are you What are you thinking through on that? Right now, I'm trying to build up my like collection of like players that I think are going to be like more of an iconic era. Like right now, I like a lot of the players that are around like LeBron, Luca, Giannis, they're all great players. They're all like people that I think that are going to be remembered down the line. And there's also a lot of people in this hobby now that are probably thinking the same way. So I want to try to build up my collection and build up my cash flow so that I'm able to afford some of the bigger cards of those players. And what's That's the goal after that when you when you get the bigger cards then what? After that, I mean, I want to eventually get a house. I think that's pretty important at my age to like start thinking about the future and what what my uh, adulthood's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, you're you're way ahead of the game, dude. Like, I mean, you're basically like a you know an entrepreneur at this point. Do you, do you think of yourself that way? I mean, sometimes I start to think of it that way, but also at the same time, I like to have a lot of fun in this hobby. Like, I'm not just worried about all the money and all, like, just building up and just super, like, looking straight ahead all the time. Like, I like to have fun with some of the other guys on here and be a uh, talk and collect and chat about sports and all. I think it's a good time. Do you have any, uh, uh, is there, like, what are, like, the pros and cons to being younger on Instagram? Are you able to, I mean, you, you have maybe more time in your hands or, like, how, how do you use that to your advantage? Um, I would say like initially I'm not like trying to like come off as like a, like super young kid because like a lot of the times, like, I don't think I'll be taken seriously for like, Oh, I want like this huge trying to buy, make a big deal. And like, they're like, Oh, well you're only like 16 years old. You're 17 years old. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take you seriously. So initially I just kind of stay stern and kind of how I want to talk and like really try to get down the business that's probably like a con because I, I can't really be myself to everyone. But like the pros are that like, I do have more time per se. Like I do have schoolwork to do. So that does cut out some of the time, but I can hang out on, on uh, Instagram at night and watch some lives and 
scroll through my feed and check out new stuff on eBay like everyone else. Are you going to do this through college or are you going to college? Uh, yes, I'm probably going to go to college. I'm applying now. Are you going to do cards like throughout and keep it going or you think you'll take a break? Because most people, you know, like everyone, you know, that's my age now, we all took breaks during college and came back. But now that the hobby's so hot, it might be different for this generation. I'm going to try. I mean, I plan on doing it. I mean, I don't know how my college experience is going to go, but I, I plan on buying and trading and selling all throughout college as well. So if you're finding Spectra stuff and flipping for four grand, I don't know that you're going to want to stop that. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> it's going to pay for, have you, are you going to try to pay for some of your college with some of this money? Uh, pro- most likely it's probably going to go to loans and stuff, but I, uh, I paid off my car already. I've, I've done all that type of stuff. So I'm just kind of, cruising on with the long with the money that i have right now just trying to build it up what do your parents think about it my parents think that it's great that i can have like a business this young and just kind of keep working and keep my mindset on something and not like falter down like some kids get into like drugs and alcohol and stuff like that yeah because i think there's a lot of younger people that would watch this and and would want to like glean some advice from you. So like what, what kind of advice would you give to maybe some of the younger people out there that are trying to get, cause cards is like a pretty, the entry is pretty simple. You know, it's like anyone can get in and get going on it. It's not something you need like uh, a ton of life experience to do. So it's kind of a a nice thing. So like, what, what would you say to some of the younger people out there that are trying to get started? I would say to some of the younger kids, like you don't need a lot of money to start you right away like just start getting into looking like looking for cards that you like like have the appeal to you like that's the most important thing and normally those types those types of cards end up holding value later on because people like the way that they look it's not all about like the hype beast and like oh i have a psa 10 luca rookie like okay like look for stuff that you think is appealing and not everything's super expensive like not everything is thousands and thousands of dollars. Like there's cards out there that are five and ten dollars that you can just buy and grade up and just keep grading and flipping. It's like an easy way to just build up capital and start really rolling in the hobby. So did you start basically from zero? Pretty much, yeah. Because I mean, that's most people would say like, oh, maybe maybe some of these kids get started from their parents' money or something. But I know a lot of guys like yourself that just literally just start from nothing. Yeah, I started with about like, I don't know, like $500 and I probably have like 10 grand in cards now on hand. (laughs) Not too bad. I mean, there's like a lot of grown adults that would struggle to do that. (laughs) Probably because they're buying the wrong things. (laughs) Actually, that's a pretty interesting topic, right? Like I've talked about it with you before. Uh, and I've, I've tried to like give you that life advice, like don't buy a car, you know, don't buy like a fancy car. Um, because it's just, it's like the depreciating assets versus, you know, cards where they're actually appreciating. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, you don't need all like these lavish things to live. Like I'm only young, so I live with my parents, but a lot of people out there would just go and buy like, I don't know, a new TV or a new car or play uh, buy new xbox games and do all that type of stuff like i know it's for entertainment and all but do you really need that stuff like you can throw it into like a, a big a nice lebron card or something the next five times like it's just yeah something you can do to make money and then you can afford that stuff down the line yeah i mean really all you need in this in this era is like a phone, you know, like you can have your own business just in your pocket on a phone. And as long as you have like a decent phone with internet, like what else do you really need? You know? Exactly. Um, what do your, what do your friends think? Like some people your, your age at school, like, do you try to get them into it? Do, are they interested in the money side of it? Like, what do they say about it? I mean, kids in school, like they're more interested in like, you know, like the Supreme and like all that type of like fashion <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, I don't know why you would spend money on that type of stuff when, I mean, I get the flipping aspect, but like the kids just buying it to wear it. It's just like, it's a money pit. Like stuff is like 
hundreds and hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars and you're just going to wear it once and then sell it used for 70 for 75 percent off yeah do that even have you gotten anyone into collecting I've gotten one of my friends to like start buying some cards and stuff. He's done pretty well, actually. He's probably made like double what he put in. So he kind of does the same thing as me. I give him some tips on what to buy and what to look for. What's your advice on Instagram? Because I feel like Instagram is kind of the the great equalizer, right? It gives you a platform to to kind of do your thing. How have you gone about Instagram? So pretty much on Instagram, if I have a question, like, I just shoot it to someone like I'm not look like I don't care who it is like maybe they'll get back to me maybe not like the when I first got on there I didn't have any posts and I messaged you like and you still answered me like I was like uh what do you think about certain cards or whatever and you helped me out right away like just reach out to the many different people on here like they're gonna help you out like no one's like selfish and like oh I'm not helping you yeah, I would add though, I get quite a bit of DMs. The reason I responded was like, you brought me some like upfront research. So talk about that. Well, if you're going to ask a question, at least have like some substance to it. Like there's not a lot like, oh, what do you think of a Luka Doncic rookie card? Like, what do you think about them? Like there's plenty of Luka Doncic rookie cards out there. Like which, which one? <laughs> Like bring bring the person that you're asking the question something of knowledge and can actually give insight about something that you might think is interesting or intriguing or something that they might want to buy per se. So like the the status thing, talk about the research you did up front because I think a lot of people are in the same boat of like because I get I get the question of like what's the best Luca rookie card to buy right now, and it's a pretty like vague question as opposed to like the research you did on status. So like, just walk me through the specific research of it. So initially up front, I was watching one of your videos and I heard you talking with one of the guests on here about galactics. And I was like, Oh, this isn't interesting. This is like an SSP super short print, like probably 20 of them, 10 of them out there. I wonder if there's any more out there of that, like of that type of set that has like a bunch of guys in it and they're super rare cards. So I just go on eBay real quick. I just type in SSP card, search for basketball cards only, start looking through, and I notice the status pursuit case hits. And I go, okay, and I just type in status pursuit case hits. Then I notice that all of them, there's every player, like every player in the league, like there's. I don't know, like any random guy you could possibly think of, including the stars. So from that, I went on to Blowout, and I looked up status cards, like the status uh, brand. And it said that the pursuits were case hits, that you were only they weren't guaranteed in anything, and they weren't going to be like super easy to hit. So from that, I went and looked at the checklist, and there's 100 guys – for the base set then there's 50 rookies so that's 150 cards and there's case hits so that would mean that there's for the exact player that you want it would take one in 150 cases so that's like a really really rare card because there's probably what 20 bucks 20 boxes in a in a case so that's a lot of boxes 3,000 or something yeah, because it's different than like the SSP of an insert set where there's only 20 players. That's a, a very big difference, right? Like, because that, that's why the Galactic, like you said, is popular. It's because there's like 150 players and the, the odds of getting LeBron or, you know, the big rookie is, is a lot harder than it would be in an insert set. Exactly. So, like, License to Dominate, it's like 10 cards, like Artistic Selections that came out here this year was like 10 guys. Like, they're not big case hit sets. So it only takes one in 10 cases to get that versus status. It was a hunt one in 150. So also there's two versions there's Walmart and target. So that gives you two different picture variations. So it's one in 200. Yeah. Yeah. Status was interesting to me and it had like that nineties flair. So it's like, it has to hit on all these different things, right? It's gotta be rare. It's gotta be a little bit unknown. You know, that there hasn't been a ton of research on it and it's also got to look good. Right. 
Exactly. It's very, very like shiny. Like when you get one in hand, like you're like, oh, wow, this is a really pretty card. You're like, wow, I really like this. Then also you touched upon like the of the of 23 and of 20 77s after I brought up the status brand. You're like, oh, these are also super interesting. There's not many. Of, I haven't seen any of them like this out there right now from like that specific year. Yeah, because it's got like the credentials kind of numbering. I think the old school serial number style, it's interesting. Yeah, it's super cool. So why don't you start showing some cards? Maybe start with the status so people can see what we're talking about. So uh, here's a, a Devin Booker Pursuit die cut. So the die cuts are actually super hard to grade as well because of all the edges. So it also makes them pretty appealing. Like Galactics are like super foily. Then I have a Giannis one with me here today. I also just got the LeBron of 23. If any of you follow me on Instagram. I just posted that one off. It's pretty sweet. It's not in yet, though. So that's some of the Isn't status. LeBron die cut, right? It's the uh, status of 23. You still have, you have the die cut, too, right? Oh, yeah, I do. That one's um downstairs, so I, didn't, I don't have it with me. What else you got? So here's some of the football stuff that I've been picking up. A lot of like receivers because I saw that as like an undervalued side of the football collecting. So here's a, a Michael Thomas Gold rookie auto from Prism out of ten. I love dude to get on the field. Uh, <laughs> I know. Hopefully we see him back this week. Nope, he's been ruled out. Really? Here's the uh, cracked ice. Yeah, so we've started buying some of the football stuff at the same time, which is fun. Like, it's fun to find, like, a new lane, right? And also, like, have someone to go out and buy stuff with. It's fun. I, I agree. I think that, like, DeAndre Hopkins, for example, it's like the reason, like, the Cardinals are good on offense is one of the big reasons is because of DeAndre Hopkins. And, like, his cards are 1% of Kyler Murray's cards. Like, it just makes sense to me. Like, I don't know. Like, just something that made a lot of sense at the time. Like, uh, I could buy a, a Hopkins Chrome rookie card for 20 bucks, and Kyler's would be, like, 800 Like, I don't know. It's just something that made sense. And the next no, I thing think it's... It's interesting because, like, when you have a decent amount of money, you sort of just, like, you just buy the best. You don't really think about it. But when you don't have as much money, you're sort of forced into, like, getting creative and, like, thinking more critically, right? You got to get cute with it if you're going to – if you don't have that much money because you're like, oh, what should I do here? Like, I can't afford this amazing card, but let me find something that I can maybe flip into that card eventually, like an undervalued set or an undervalued player. Like you see a lot of the people now, like their main thing is just prospecting. Like, oh, I got to buy, like uh, Dylan Windler didn't play a single minute in the NBA and his NTRPA is $900. Like, that's just what people do. What if something like you get a new idea that comes up? How do you, and you're, and you're cash poor and you just have all cards, how do you pivot? Do you Do you try to sell stuff real quick? How do you like maneuver and pivot like that? I mean, I normally have a little bit of cash, but if I have to start moving stuff because I like want to move it into something else, I got to just sell some cards off. Normally, I'll, I'll just sell some stuff that I would be okay with parting with, and I hopefully it's not too rare, so I might be able to buy it back later. Yeah. Yeah, it's smart to at least have, like if you are if you have zero cash, to at least sell something kind of uh, – in anticipation of something else coming up that you might need. So like, it's, it's always smart to have some cash on hand at all times. I agree. I sometimes have to move some stuff that I'd, I'd rather 
keep, but <laughs> when you think of something new and you really think it's going to be a big thing, then you got to just go for it. Yeah, totally. All right, Kyle, well, this has been good. Do you have any, any final thoughts, any last minute words of wisdom for our audience? For all the younger people out there, I would say just hop into cards and start asking people different things and really present the person that you're asking a question to with some knowledge and some insight that they can really help you out and really you can end up making a friendship out of it. And for some of the older people out there, you don't always have to buy the best card. You could also buy something that you think is going to be an upcoming set or an upcoming player per se. And that could end up rolling you into or be an amazing card someday because you thought it was great in the early stages. Yeah. I love that perspective, man. Appreciate you coming on and uh, giving us something new to think about. So I appreciate it. Uh, We'll talk soon. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me.